Hi everybody, this is Gatsad. I hope that your week is off to a good start. So today I wanted to spend a few minutes discussing with you the importance of engaging your children. And oftentimes with these types of uh, life lessons, if you'd like, sharing a personal anecdote is really demonstrative and telling. So my children came to see me in my study. I'm working on a forthcoming paper uh, and you know, we started chatting and at one point I was explaining to them, you know, how I apply evolutionary psychology and evolutionary biology uh, principles in understanding consumer behavior. And so I turned to an example of the satin bowerbird. So for those of you who don't know, the, uh, uh, the bowerbird creates a bower, which is a architectural uh, structure, if you'd like, that serves no functional purpose other than to signal to females, look how artistic I am, look at my architectural abilities, look at my uh, decorating abilities, because what the male uh, satin bowerbird does is he basically is using this, this bower as a canvas, uh, very much the way that, say, male artists will try to impress the ladies with their artistic abilities. As I explained in uh, one of my lectures, uh, you know, Picasso was not a particularly uh, gorgeous, you know, alpha male. He wasn't, you know, tall and neurosurgeon with six pack abs. Uh, yeah, but so he was a short guy, balding, quite, you know, standard in his looks. Yet he had a long line of women who were perfectly happy and willing to mate with him precisely because he was Picasso. And so I was explaining, you know, the whole concept of sexual selection and so on. And at one point, my daughter turns to me and says, but daddy, I feel very sad because what about if the females don't pick that bower bird? Are they sad? And this comes from this incredibly, you know, beautiful and innocent quality that she has where her empathy is, you know, off the charts, she's always concerned, you know, is, is, is he sad? Is she sad? Is this one sad? Is that one sad? She even extends it. She anthropomorphizes uh, inanimate objects in terms of whether they are sad or not. So if you dis discard something, is, is the salt shaker sad, daddy? Which is a really, I mean, it, it is a psychological process that we all do where we anthropomorphize, you know, inanimate objects, but she extends her empathy to all things. Uh, in any case, so she's she was very concerned. She was very upset that, so what about the ones who are not picked, daddy? Are they sad? And so that sent me off into a conversation. So I thought, you know, how am I going to explain this? And it, 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 we, so I gave them like this whole big lecture to, to, to my children on different mating systems. Uh, so there is, of course, monogamy, one-on-one, -on -one, one man, one woman. And then there is polygamy and polygamy Contrary to what people think, polygamy doesn't mean one man, many women. Polygamy just means one with many. Now, there are two types of polygamy. There is polygyny, which is one man, multiple women. And there is polyandry, one woman, multiple men. Polyandry is very rare. Uh, the most famous example is Tibetan polyandry. Uh, polygyny is the most common form of human mating system, documented or accepted or allowed uh, in 85% of documented cultures. And then the rest is monogamy and very, very, very few cases of polyandry. And the reason for that is because polyandry, of course, creates paternity, un paternity uncertainty. Uh, in any case, so as I was explaining to her, what started off as her innocent, you know, beautifully childlike question of, are they sad, daddy, if they're not picked by prospective mates? I said, well, in monogamy, you're going to have less sadness because ultimately everyone ends up assorting. So everyone will find a mate except that they will find a mate that matches their mate value. So the, 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 the guy who's got no job, who, you know, who's very low on the totem pole might still find a female or in this case, a, a human female, but she will also have lower mating value. Uh, on the other hand, uh, someone who is a very high status guy who, who scores very highly on desired traits that women seek, he's the one who will, you know, end up with, uh, you know, the beautiful uh, woman. 
Uh, and again, I don't mean to apply that it's only beauty that men look for, but what I'm saying is that there is an assortative mating based on overall mate quality. And so I said, well, in a monogamous setting, you won't have as much sadness, but in a polygynous setting, then you will have a lot of sadness because one male will monopolize uh, access to many females while the other males are twiddling their thumbs. And I gave the example of the elephant seal. And then she still was unhappy because when I said, well, but in the polygynous case, they will be unhappy and therefore sad. She goes, no, but daddy, you just have to say that they won't be sad. I said, okay, fine. They won't be sad. No one is sad. So what started off as a very, very innocent remark by my daughter led to a beautiful interaction where I offered a full lecture on the satin bower bird, sexual selection, you know, different mating systems, monogamy, polygyny, polyandry, and all that started with her wondering whether the mates who are not selected are sad. So life lesson here, engage your children. They have beautifully ready minds, ready to be filled with all sorts of wonder, but you need to take the time. I could have said to them, you know, get out of my study, I'm busy. Instead, I looked at these beautiful creatures and I said, I am, I'm privileged that I have an opportunity to shape their minds. And I took the time to engage them as full-fledged, you know, bright minds ready to absorb human knowledge or knowledge in general. So there you have it, folks. Don't ignore your children. Engage them. Love them. Hug them. Give them importance. And on that note, I wish you all a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.